contract, you guys were very you know, kind of, it was a premeditated approach on how you wanted to avoid that stress that you experienced at Gainesville. Looking back at that first year, how would you grade that, that first year, not the 12 and 0, but the Urban Meyer contract family? Well, you, you said we were all hesitant. I wasn't. <laughs> I think that uh, people maybe had a misunderstanding of what actually happened at Gainesville. Uh, it wasn't the stress of the job. It was the, there were some chest pains for three years and went undiagnosed for a long time. And in the back of my mind, we won a couple of championships, and, and I lost a friend who was a coach at Northwestern, Randy Walker. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I'll kill myself here. Something's not right. And so I was down to 180 pounds, lost 37 pounds, and. And just didn't feel right, and then that, we had a bad night one night, and that's that's what did it. So it wasn't the, you know, the X's and O's or recruiting. You know, that's part of the business. It's the fact that you thought something was wrong. So, so that's that's what happened. But I'd grade, uh, I grade. I you met my two girls, and, and they're my best friends. I mean, it, it, it's, I, I hear people say that sometimes. It's not true. That's true. Those are my best friends, and, and we talk five six times a day. My oldest daughter, I mean, nonstop, and Gigi, and we nonstop. And uh, they're off. They're very hard. I mean, that's uh, they're tough people to please as far as taking care of myself, making sure we're doing right. So I grade myself. You'd have to ask them, but I think you know we didn't have any speed bumps this year. Right. So how you handle a speed bump is probably the best indication. But according to you and everyone else, we're not going to have one for like seven years. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so that's going to be a breeze. Yeah. 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 Shelly, Shelly, how would you grade it? Awesome. Yeah. You talked on the on the uh, by the pool deck today about the team early being what was your term you used? Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. He said that, not me. He said that. Uh, what what changed? Well, so I think that's the essence of team sports, and I, and I, I get so defensive sometimes that uh, even my year at ESPN, I'd hear. You know, and I, not just that he's standing here, but, uh, you know, the Herb Streets, the Corsos, the Fowlers, the, the, you know, the guys I work with, Spielman, uh, I mean, they understand it. The essence of a team sport, it's not like tennis or box. Those are great sports. And it's really not like basketball. I mean, basketball, you can see a great player dominate a game. You can't see that in football. And you take a great player and put a bad line in front of him, he's an average player. So we were a very uh, uh, evaluative team. And when an individual, when players start evaluating a program, evaluating a coach, evaluating why we practice so hard on a Tuesday when before we didn't do that, that's, I'm not, it's, there, there's not one way to do it. And we were a lot of different than the way it was done before. And uh, we're not going to change. How so? so? How are you different than before? Uh, we were grinders. I mean, it's, it's awful. I mean, we want to, our, our, our payday is Saturday. And we want our kids to be out there. Michael Jordan, had, I consider him the, one of the greatest of all time, not just because he's a champion, but he practiced and he ran the team. And practices were much harder than the games. There's a great quote by Michael Jordan that says, the reason he practiced so hard, he wants the games to be easy. That's a quote I saw in 2001 when I first became head coach of Bowling Green. If you walk in our locker room, it's right there. I refer to it all the time. We grow, I mean, we go really, I'm disappointed if I have a pro scout saying that you're not the hardest practicing team in America. And that was a little different. And so there's some pushback by our players, there's some evaluation by our players. They're all good guys. And Schlegel, uh, Anthony could attest to this, but over the you know the transition of that week four to five, when we went up to East Lansing, it was complete, I mean, 180. It went from being a team that was kind of like this to we're all in. And it was, it was a magical moment when that happened. The, uh, the leadership of that team, you've been around some great teams. Yeah. You won the national title in 06 and 08. What do you think of the leadership of, uh, of this 2012 team? Well, there's a theory that I, that I go by, and it's, it's easy to remember. Uh, talent will get you about seven to eight wins. So in other words, you can have 70, uh, you can go out and recruit your tail off. You can have Donald Duck come in, throw a whistle around his neck, <laughs> and you get you about seven, right? right? Maybe eight. Uh, and then all of a sudden you uh, get a little discipline in there, you know, where guys start, you know, when you say get behind the white line, it means get behind the line and go to class and do things. Then you start pushing that nine win, maybe a ten win season. But 
uh, the, the hardest thing to come across because you have to really recruit it and try to develop a little bit is the leadership. So talent gets you seven to eight, discipline will start pushing you with talent nine to ten, and then if you start getting the kind of kids that we had in this program, John Simon, Sabino, Goble, and Zach Warren, as far as I'm concerned, as good a leadership as I've ever been around. Really? And that's how magical things are. the point, and I don't want to beat that up too bad, but I, I, I really truly love those kids. They're part of our family, and Shelly knows this, my girls, and for the rest of our lives, that senior class will have a special play, place, and, and they can be, and, and we, we're, that's, you know, I'd like to think that's the way our players talk about our staff. Ten years down the road, coach, can you, yes, can you help us with this? Yes, can you do this? Yes, because that's, uh, it's a two-way street. You know, if they don't give, you know, it's, it's one of these things. You yeah. can't keep taking. If you give but back, how, it's a great relationship. How did you get them to buy in when you didn't have the Rose Bowl as a carrot, you didn't have the National Championship as a carrot? How did you get them to buy into, I'm a new coach? What well, I think it was I. I think it was, you know, you'd, you'd anticipate, I had high expectations. And I told Shelly this when we started having a conversation about Ohio State, is the quality of person that you deal with from your generation from the Eddie George generation to the Archie Griffin generation to when I was here with the Spielman generation. You might have a stray guy once in a while, right. but in general terms, you're dealing with high quality people that they come to Ohio State. The, the bad guys don't survive. And so you're talking about high quality, high end guys that care about team, care about Ohio State. And uh, so I, I think, you know, and I'm not just saying that, I think we got, the coaches got far too much credit. Uh, you had a group of players uh, the seniors that took over that football team, and it was it was magical. What was it like? You, you grew up in Ohio, and you, you made it very clear that it was your dream to be the head coach at Ohio State one day. What was it like? You were there as a GA. You learned under Earl. You went out. You were an assistant. Became a head coach at Bowling Green. Went to Utah. Went to Florida. Won national championships. You got out. All of a sudden, the Ohio State job abruptly comes open. You get pulled back in, and, and you're always on the outside wondering what it would be like to be the head coach of Ohio State. What was the difference between wondering what it would be like and being the head coach every day? You, know, it's, it, you get a little emotional when you think about it because I, uh, you know, I grew up in a household with three channels. Like, you know, no, you're too young for that. <laughs> I, was, I was in there. You know, I Captain Kangaroo. Oh, stop. You had, uh, I did. You had, you had all this. I did. No. I didn't I didn't start start until we had to grade. walk up and get your butt up and go over and No. <laughs> uh, I had to actually turn that. No, I did. So I was like, do it. The high rim restricting center rope. Yeah. You know, my dad had a remote control, it was me. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Go turn that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but I was talking to, in the state of Ohio on Friday nights, the, the town shut down. It's high school football is great. It still is that way. You know, we're talking to a, a group of people in the Steubenville area and, and some other areas, and it's just, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, you woke up, it was all Ohio State. And then on uh, Sunday, you watched the people from Cincinnati and Cleveland getting street fights about the Bengals and Brown. Yeah. And that's all I knew. Yeah. Uh, I, to this day, remember my mom, for some reason, I still don't understand why, but I was probably five or six years old, and Ohio State's playing that team. And we get in the car, and we have to go run an errand. And, and you know, what are you talking about? And we go, and it's like an outdoor mall, and, and on the loudspeakers, it was the game going on. And I remember just, and, you know, and I'm just mesmerized here, and it's Woody versus Bo in the 70s. And, um, and so, I mean, you know. And then when I was a graduate assistant, it was, it was Bo versus Earl. And I'm not sure everybody realizes this. You know, Earl Bruce has a winning record against Bo Schenbeckler. He was, uh, That's the only coach that Woody, uh, excuse me, Bo didn't have a really? record against. Okay. And so my first year, I'm 21 years old, I believe. Yeah, 21 years old. And we're playing Coach Bruce's final game in Ann Arbor. And, you know, my job, you know, other than making coffee, was hold the door <laughs> shut. And then uh, I opened the doors, and I looked across the hallway, and there's the maize and blue with Bo Schemper standing right there, staring right at me. I was like, holy cow, what are we didn't do it here now. And, uh, so just to answer the line, it's a little way answer your question. Earl Band, right? That was Earl Band, and uh, uh, he went out a winner. Yeah. Carlos Snow on the screen down the left sideline there. What about this team moving into 2013? You, you, you just mentioned some warriors. They're gone. 
How well, do you remember, feel about this this team? What what has to click in winter conditioning with Schlegel into spring ball and then carry over into August? Well, I, you know, I hope that people just remember there's if you want to put together a team, talent gets you how many? I'm asking you right there. It gets you, get you seven. And I think we're good enough to get us a seven. According to you, once again, it's 28 in a row or something. Yeah. We'll get a seven. Uh, I'm very concerned about leadership. I don't see it right now, you know, but... Uh, uh, Are you supposed to see it right now? Yeah, I started start to see a little bit. A little disappointed on offense. I see a little bit. Uh, defense, it's non-existent right now. Uh, but so when it's not existent, what do you do? Well, you, you, you put them in situations where they have to lead. For example, we... Uh, uh, coach Marotti, I'm sure you guys heard him. He's my right hand guy. He's our strength coach, and and I'm not taking this job without him. I can't do that. You know, you got to have a guy that's gonna uh, not just teach you how to bench press, but teach the uh, principles of leadership and team building that we do. I don't mean to interrupt you, but for, let people understand when you're at, you take over a new job, the number one position on your coaching staff is strength coach. And not even close. Tell, tell them why. Well, the NCAA has put so many restrictions on what you do, and the strength coach can break you or he can make you. And over the years, I've seen a lot of guys get broke. And they don't, you know, they, they're with the players much more than we are. They're in the locker room much more. You know, and you have to teach something more. Uh, you have to get an edge. And to say, okay, Ohio State's bench pressing. Okay, that makes us one of 130. Right. But we, we go much deeper than that. We teach a fight or flight mentality. I mean, it's, it's awful. Our strength program, and it's you hear about mat drills, and it's 6 a.m. and it's 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 brutal. I mean, it's awful. Good. And uh, that's the whole the recruiting process. Yes. Yes. But uh, Mickey puts them in. For example, we broke them up into eight teams, and you have two leaders on each team. And it's for example, Jack Mjord and Braxton Miller, are leader of a team. If a kid misses a class, and every week those teams are working out, and then on Friday mornings, uh, one team has to come in at 5 a.m. and just get beaten up badly and that's a result of bad point you know kids misses class a kid does something stupid a kid loafs and so what happens it teaches the coaches are out of it it teaches these kids to lead these idiots right. so for example <laughs> if there's an idiot that doesn't like to go to class then somehow they need to convince them to go to class and whether it's close the door and do what you got to do to the kid or you know have a hug or you know however you, you, you have to figure it out if a group hug does it, have the group hug. I'm not a big group hug guy. <laughs> but I, you know, I can see it happening, but we need to accelerate that process over the next few weeks. What? Uh, oh, this, this Schlegel's a group hug guy, if you can. Oh, yeah, I can totally imagine that. With his, with his knife from killing a boar, <laughs> let's hug it out.